Meanwhile, road users are advised to avoid all attempts to travel between Tugela Plaza in KwaZulu Natal and Harrismith in the Free State as the N3 toll route remains closed. Tanya Druga, Chief Operating Officer of N3 Toll Concession, says their efforts, however, are being hampered by road users attempting to circumvent road closure points as well as safety instructions. Druga has asked motorists for their cooperation, patience as well as compliance to safely restore mobility on the N3 toll route. She adds that multidisciplinary rescue as well as recovery teams are currently working to help clear the area between Van Ruenen's Pass and Swinburne in Montrose. All lanes in the vicinity of Van Ruenen town towards the Swinburne Montrose junction remain obstructed by a large number of heavy as well as light motor vehicles. The Road Traffic Inspectorate says that many vehicles have also been abandoned by their drivers or broken down and light motor vehicles are currently being released southbound towards Tugela Plaza under escort of traffic officials. However, tracks continue to be gridlocked in the area. Officials have also urged motorists to use alternative routes that are safe and accessible for long distance travel. Gift of the Givers founder, Dr. Imtia Suleiman, joins us now as we continue to look at relief efforts on those that have been stranded on the snow-clouded road since Friday evening. Doctor, uh, great having you with us. A very good afternoon to you. So we understand your teams, as always, like the first responders uh, on the ground. Uh, what type of relief as well as rescue efforts did your teams actually assist with for those uh, trapped uh, motorists? Good afternoon, Alicia. Ours wasn't so much rescue, it was more relief because we really couldn't move anybody out of the place there. We were dependent on the graders from the entry, you know, to move the, the snow so we could go in. We used different um, options. The one team went from escort towards Moirava. They went with the RTI. At some point, they were helping the RTI, even direct traffic, to get out of the way. And then as the graders moved, they started driving behind the graders and got to a point where they could help motorists. And then they had to walk through half in, in snow, knee deep snow, to walk towards people. But at some point they couldn't go any further, especially to those on the other side on the northbound. So they had to get very uh, adventurous and start throwing items across. And the, 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 the motorists on the other side were catching the items. It was blankets, drinks, meals, energy biscuits, and food. And because no day from the northbound, they couldn't walk to the southbound. After the southbound, we couldn't walk to the northbound. The snow was just too thick. So we managed to do that. Whilst that is being done, we then set up a feeding center in Escort, the community hall. Many people came there, but they didn't sit and eat. They just took the food in pre-packaged uh, pre boxes and moved away. They wanted to get to their destination. And later on in the afternoon on Saturday, from the same feeding center, we moved in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Not from Escort to Moirava, but Escort towards Ladysmith. And started again, followed the, the RTI and the graders and managed to assist quite a few people in that route. Mm. We were then called. And yes, doctor, go ahead. Sorry. We were then called by Ladysmith to say, please, there's three buses, people are stranded. Can you, you know, bring uh, food here? But by the time we got there, the buses couldn't wait and they left. So we decided to go to the ultimate point, which is from Renan. And my, my teams were stuck in traffic for quite some time, but eventually they reached the end of Van Vinen, and they distributed to a lot of people there until 3 a.m. today. The mayor of the area came out, Nestle offered a lot of hot drinks, and with our food and our blankets, we managed to get all that done to quite a few people in Van Vinen. And the last part was we're sending vehicles from Johannesburg, we Saza, they partnered us, and they took in supplies from Johannesburg coming the other way towards Harrisburg. And today, mm -hmm. right now, my team's on the way to Tugela to see what else they can do for the last remaining people stuck in snow. All right. And, Doctor, what type of collaborative efforts then with government uh, departments are you still busy with at this current stage? And how long will your teams remain on standby to assist? It's almost over, to be honest. You know, the roads are virtually open everywhere. You know, all the way from, from, from Escort to Peter Marisburg is open. In fact, all the roads are open. At one stage, a little earlier, it was already close between Harwick and Underberg, Harrisburg and Bergwell, and still between Montrose and Van Linen. But with each hour, more and more of those cars are coming out and more and more people are getting away. We, we emphasize that it's a road for people to get out, not for people to travel. The road is still not safe. If there's ice on the road, there's sheet, 
you know, it's dangerous. So it should only be used by people wanting to get out of the snow, not wanting to do casual travel. They should just wait a little longer for that to happen and to give the traffic authorities more time to clear the road. Also, you asked me what collaboration. We only needed to work with our N3 and uh, our talk session people and the road traffic inspectorate. We have a very good relationship with the RTI as well as the SAPS. But in this case, only the RTI was required. And of course, we work with some towing tow truck companies that generally work with us to spread out to move the speed at which items could be delivered. Although speed is in inverted commas because you really can't move fast for all that snow in that area. You know, Doctor, I mean, we understand. I mean, snow is not uh, a regular occurrence here in South Africa. So how did your teams even prepare uh, for some of the relief efforts uh, that you were actually assisting with? Well, you know, it, relief is quite standard in everything that you do. Depends what kind of disaster is. You know, you always need shelter, hot meals, drinks, energy, bis energy biscuits, blankets, clothing, that's standard they require in any, any disaster, depending on the type of disaster. So yeah, what did the people need? They needed to be kept warm because, you know, it was cold in the cars and they couldn't move. They hadn't eaten, so they required water and, and meals to eat and drink. They needed something warm and they needed blankets. Those are the standard items. What we couldn't help them with is if they needed any medication or you know, a specific type of medication. That's impossible to know because you don't know who is in which car. And I mean, there's thousands of cars on the road. With this standard type of approach, we, we, we kept helicopters on standby, but they couldn't fly, which normally happens. It has happened three times before. The ambulances couldn't move, so you're stuck there. You know, the tow trucks are also stuck at some point. The only thing that helps is graders. And, and the beauty of South Africans is we don't wait for, you know, government authorities. We just work together. And the government authorities, there are all the people work together. Whoever's got a grader just brings a grader. Whoever can get to a car, gets to a car. In, in, in the garages, people opened up their restaurants and said, come sleep inside here. I know in many restaurants, overnight, they kept it open for people to sleep in the restaurants, in the garages. So it's a very collaborative South African effort where we always do this together when we have crisis like this. Whether it's the floods that hit April 2022, it came in, whether it was summer of 2021, whenever there's a crisis, we stand together. So we just needed to follow graders. We are the suppliers. We can act fast because we are always stocked up as a standard policy, our warehouses are always full. We don't have to buy stuff on the day the disaster happens. It's already there. Mm. Doctor, thank you so much. Uh, as always, we do appreciate uh, those efforts. Dr. Imtia Suleiman, the gift of the givers uh, on their rescue as well as relief efforts along the N3 toll route.